Born on July 4, 1948, René Arnoux shares the same spirit of independence as the founders of the United States. From his childhood, René Arnoux is gifted for driving. It all started in the 1950s. He was only eight years old when, on vacation with his parents on the Adriatic coast, the family passed by a karting track. Dad, I want to try! No sooner said than done, and here he was installed somehow, being not tall, driving a cart. This sport was quite new, especially in Italy where there were still many American troops. The person in charge couldn't believe the kid's natural ability was so obvious. It is therefore on vacation that he discovered the passion that would never leave him, piloting. During the 1960s, he followed the existing ways which highlighted the most promising pilots of their time. Meanwhile, he received professional training from a mechanical wizard, familiar to post-war Alfa Romeo enthusiasts, Conrero. There, he learned the precision mechanics he loved and two things that young pilots no longer know. Knowledge of mechanics and its limits. But above all, the contact and respect of those who prepare the car for the race the next day. Today, this human respect is replaced by screens. On the sporting level, he would thus be crowned Volant Shell in 1972. This crown opened the way to a magnificent career for him. Judge for yourself, he won the Formula Renault European Challenge in 1973 and the Formula Renault Europe Challenge in 1975. In 1977, he became the Formula 2 European champion. He went directly to F1 in the team of Tico Martini, novice in the first category. While it shined in the F3 and especially F2 categories, the step of F1 was too high, which led to the withdrawal of the Martini team during the season. After a brief stint at Surtees, also in great difficulty, the doors of the National Renault team opened in 1979 at the time when the racing team was promising with its turbo engine. The team would only win one GP, that of France. But this victory, won by Jabwila, was not remembered while the fight between the two knights of risk, Villeneuve and Arnoux, made an impression during decades. Let's rewind, we are on the difficult circuit of Dijon, when seven laps from the end, these two men, united by a solid friendship outside the paddocks, are nonetheless fierce rivals on the track. Arnoux, having joined Villeneuve, decides to engage in a merciless struggle. For those who followed the live broadcast of Jacques de Cheneau, an unrivaled commentator in this discipline, he almost lost his voice so hot it was. René remembers that the two single-seaters, launched at more than 200 kilometers h, touched each other seven times in the last three laps. Gilles finished second and René third few people remember who was first. René likes to tell another story of his complicity with Gilles Villeneuve. At USGP practice at Watkins Glen, we were chatting, and Gilles asked me, the curve at the bottom of the straight before the pits, are you going full speed? I answered him that no, I relieved at the entrance then gas thoroughly. Me too, he replied, but I wondered if it was okay. When free practice resumed after a few laps, I saw Gila's car destroyed in the rails. Without losing a second, I went out to see if Gila's was not injured. He was in great shape and said in my ear, the bottom curve, it does not pass full throttle. That says a lot about this beautiful camaraderie tinged with rivalry. We can easily imagine his horror when after hitting the back of Jochen Maas, Gila's was killed by falling headfirst on the track after his seat was torn from the frame. René Arnoux won the Brazilian and South African GPs in 1980, then France and Italy with Renault. His results at Renault were closely watched at Maranello. So, one fine day, he received a call from Italy to arrange an appointment with the Commandatore himself. As he still remembers, when you have such an appointment, nothing else matters and the feverishness wins over you. I don't tell you when you have him in front of you. Everything was decided during this meeting. As there were two personalities who relied on authenticity, there's been a real spark between the two men and a simple hand shakilata 
it was agreed that Rene would wear the racing suite that every F1 driver dreams of, that of the prancing horse for the 1983 season. But the boss used to wait for the Italian GP to announce the transfers. However, this GP was won by René Arnoux ahead of També and Andretti. The opportunity was perfect to declare. Today, there are three Ferrari drivers on the podium, thereby formalising his arrival at the Scuderia. This is the beginning of a fantastic story between these two men, united by a passion for mechanics. During a trip to Fiorano in 2021, René confided something to me on the terrace overlooking the track. Do you see the little house in the middle? This is where Mr. Ferrari liked to have his meal, and sometimes as I went through private practice laps, his butler would come to the side of the track and stop me to say, Mr. Ferrari would like to have lunch with you. There followed a one-on-one -on -one without witnesses during which the pilot explained his feelings to the father. Such closeness is unthinkable today. It was another era. René willingly confides with great gratitude towards the one he still respectfully calls Monsieur Ferrari. This gratitude contrasts with those who, once thanked, have never ceased to criticise. It must be noted that it is at the wheel of Scuderia single sighters that he has won the most victories in a season. During the 1983 season, he won the GP of Canada, the Netherlands and Germany. The departure from Ferrari will remain a mystery well kept by René. However, it would never affect his deep admiration for Monsieur Ferrari. He would continue at Ligier. Unfortunately, the machines were not competitive enough and René retired from competition after a brilliant career of 162 races, 18 pole positions, 22 podiums, a third place in the F1 World Championship in 1983, and above all, seven victories in GP. Small precision, in 1983, Ferrari won the title Constructor. René told me the story of a conversation during which the Commandatore said to him, bring me back the Constructor's title, and as for the pilot's title, help yourself out. At the end of his career as an F1 driver, René Arnoux returned to the discipline that gave him the taste of driving, karting. He owned four indoor karting tracks, two in the Paris region, one in the Lyon area, and one in Aix-en-Provence. But his great reconversion would be watches. His passion for precision watchmaking, which he learned at Conrero and in Switzerland, more precisely at Le Sentier. He has entered the capital of Kif Parashox, which operates cutting-edge technology used by the entire industry of which he is a supplier. Regarding automotive, he has remained close to Ferrari, more precisely to historic F1 enthusiasts on the one hand, and on the other to the owner-drivers of FXXK, whom he advises and shares his enormous experience with. In conclusion, René Arnoux, now 73 years old, remains an eternal teenager who divides his life between his two great passions, watchmaking in Switzerland and motor racing in Italy. Above all, he remains a playful, quick-witted personality. At the wheel, I can guarantee you that he didn't lose anything. Thanks to him for allowing us to share his universe during this interview. We would like also to thank Patrick Dimier for this article. You can find more information about René Arnoux and Gilles Villeneuve in our magazine. For more videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel.